Hi, uh, this is actually the, the image manipulation part of our video, and what we're going to do here is take a look at two images and and see what MIPAV can do to help us learn about uh, these images and and make comparisons between the images and and do some and run some rudimentary algorithms to improve image quality or or to learn about what's going on here. So uh, one thing we can we can do is just open up a couple of images. So here's a flare and here's an MP rage from a single subject. So this is a T1 weighted image and this is the T2 weighted flare. Um, and so one might ask, you know, well, what can we learn about by looking at each of these images separately or, or looking at them together? Well, the, the first problem is that if we want to look at these images jointly I and mean, at the same time, we can see that these images are, ac are actually in different spaces. And so one thing we might want to do is ask, well, can we put these images into the same spaces? Can we align them and, and, and then look at them uh, sort of on a, in the same um, volume? Well, the, the process of this alignment and interpolation is called registration. And so one thing we might want to do is, is register, say, this MP rage to this flare. To do that, we can select the MP rage. We can go to algorithms, registration, and we can see that there are all of these different um, registration algorithms that are incorporated in MIPAV. Let's select the optimized automatic registration, for example, which brings up this dialog box. And this dialog box has all different options for uh, the registration, including information about how, or including the option for how it. NIPAV is going to do the interpolation if the images are different sizes and such, um, and and also um, how the the registration is is done with respect to other uh, parameters. Uh, the most important thing to see here is that we've taken the MP range and and selected that before we we hit the registration button, and it's asking us what we want to register to. So we we said we wanted to register the MP range to the flare. And then we, we select, say, the default options for everything else. Well, we can click OK, and that'll take a few minutes. And it'll then give us uh, the result of this registration, which, for to save time, I've actually done already and, and is right here. So what we can see now is that this T1 weighted image and, and this, this, flare, this, this flare image, they're actually in the same space, or they, they're much more in much more similar spaces. So... Uh, to take a look at, at what's going on in terms of the registration and whether the registration succeeded, one thing we can do is ask, well, can we put these two images now on top of each other? Because they're in the same space, they should, they sh the, the points should correspond. So to do this overlaying of images, we can select one of the images, go to File, Load Image from Frame, and that'll bring up this dialog box. And we can select the other image, and then deselect these two options, which are not necessary. And then we can click OK. And it should just take a second. And now what we can see is, on top of the registered MPRH, we've overlaid the flare. And back in one of the earlier videos, we showed you how this slider shows the slice of the particular image. Well, this slider here, actually shows which uh, allows you to transition between the two overlaid images in terms of transparency. So this is one of the images, and this is another one of the images. And if we take a look, what we can see is the registration here did an OK job, but certainly not perfectly. We might want to adjust these, the, the different parameters uh, much more carefully and, and if, we, if we really care about this registration being correct. But nonetheless, uh, it gives us a little bit of a, a better idea. So. Uh, if we're done with the overlay, we can then go back up to uh, File and hit Close Image. And that'll actually close the overlaid image and bring us back to our uh, MP rage that we were originally looking at. And we can go back to a slice, the same slice, say. So that's 285. And here we have the, the, the two images again. The registered MP rage and the original flare. The next thing we might want to ask about is whether we can actually take images and add them, subtract them, or, or do these kinds of things. Well, here it doesn't really make sense to add a flare to a T1 necessarily, but just to show you these techniques, 
um, what we can do is we can just take one of them, go to Utilities, and hit Image ca Calculator. The Image Calculator will then bring up this dialog box, and it allows us to do a whole bunch of operations. For example, we can add the MP range, the, the registered MP range, to the flare, and and ask for that in a new image, and we'll get. this, which may be useful in some cases. Some of the work we've done on, on subtraction imaging um, relies on these kinds of arithmetic operations applied to images. Uh, and also, when you, you have a, a mass that you want to apply to an image, of course, you can do that uh, using the image calculator. So uh, I can close that. We're done with that. Uh, another question is, uh, what happens if we have an image uh, that looks very noisy? Like, for example, this MP Rage may actually have a lot of noise in it. Well, one thing we can do, we can go back to the original and see. Say we want to look at this image, but blurred, just to, to be able to, to look at certain features or to be able to uh, use that as a preprocessing step uh, or as part of our algorithm of interest. Well, um, to do Gaussian blurring, which is sort of standard, uh, what we can do is we can select an image, go back to algorithms, filter spatial, and then just hit Gaussian blur. And that'll bring up this little dialog box, and we can put in all the options that we want. So for example, we could change the kernel size to a 3x3x3 three by three by three voxel kernel. So um, if we want to then apply that kernel, I could click OK. Um, but I actually have done that already so that we can see it a little bit faster. And this is the image that we get. So on slice 127, you should see that this is just a blurred version of the original image. So um, this might be useful. Or, uh, uh, of course, we could also consider a, a smaller kernel or a larger kernel, however is necessary. Um, but for now, uh, we can stick with, with our original image and ask, well, are these, are, is, there, is there any problem here in terms of the image quality? Are there any uh, other preprocessing steps that we might want to do? Well, a very common preprocessing step has to do with image homo inhomogeneity. Um, that is, some scanners, when they acquire an image, or I should say all scanners when they acquire an image, um, induce a uh, a spatially dependent bias. That is, the, there's this uh, difference between the the, the in intensities uh, for similar uh, structures and similar matter, depending on where in the scanner uh, the structure is being measured. And to deal with this, a very common technique that's used is called the N3 and homogeneity correction. So one another thing we might want to do is to, to d apply that to, to these images. And to do that, we can go to algorithm, shading correction, and inhomogeneity N3 correction. And so That'll bring up this dialog box, which has a whole bunch of options. And we can go ahead and set these options and actually uh, click OK. And it'll go through and, and apply that inhomogeneity in correction to the data. And the, this would be the result, this very similar image. Um, but because in, in this case, it's, it's actually hard to t see the difference. Um, the the inhomogeneity is not so. Uh, dramatic to the the eye but nonetheless uh, it's been run here so uh, there are many other tools that MIPAV has uh, including some brain extraction uh, that is skull stripping algorithms um, and and all these these different tools and as well as uh, plugins that have been uh, made by different uh, groups and so uh, the, the image manipulation framework here in, in MIPAV is actually quite quite flexible, and so uh, I hope that this has given you a little bit of a flavor of what MIPAV can do, um, but of course this is just the, the most basic, basic stuff. In the next video, uh, we're going to talk about how to take, in it, how to take these, these processed images uh, and actually output them through sc screen capture and through um, saving.